Hello everybody and welcome back. This is part 11 of our Trumpeter 1200 scale HMS hood build. Uh, in this video we'll be continuing the construction of the bridge structure and it'll be the top part of the bridge that we're looking at this time which uh, is basically the forebridge and the uh, compass platform above. Uh, you might remember in the last video, if you saw it, part 10, that we built the Admiral's uh, Bridge platform here. And I had that fitted uh, on top of the Conning Tower platform uh, structure. And there was something just nagging at me about the shield arrangement around the sides and the back. And I don't know what it was, but I went back to my drawings and noticed that the drawings have some stanchions marked all the way around the aft and side, uh, the rear sides of the platform. And I also looked at some photographs which seemed to show there was some sort of canvas along the sides of the platform. And that got me thinking whether or not actually there were some railings all the way around the back rather than the solid shield that both Trumpeter and Pontos provide for this platform. So I decided to send a message off to modelwarships.com. There's a thread on that website which is all about the HMS Hood and there's lots of uh, really good contributors to it, uh, to that particular thread. So I sent a message off just querying my doubts about this splinter shield or this shield around the back and sides of uh, the Admiral's Bridge. And within just a few hours, um, I got a message back from Frank Allen, who's uh, one of the members of the HMS Hood Association. Uh, and you'll remember that uh, in part one, I referred you to the HMS Hood Association website, hmshood.com. Uh, Frank messaged me back to say that, yes, there was uh, a railing around the back and sides of this platform at least in 1940 and also very helpfully sent me a photograph which just confirmed it for me and just completely set my mind at ease uh, and it's taken from roughly this position uh, on the starboard side uh, and looking aft and it's looking through the railings on this corner so there was no canvas in place but it did show, it does demonstrate that there was a railing around the back. So I went back into the uh, platform and removed the uh, shield from the sides and the back of the platform. Uh, and I'll replace that with a railing at uh, some point when I've done a bit more work on the bridge above. So that's it's great to have that confirmation. What I'm not sure about yet is whether or not to apply some sort of canvas effect around the sides. There are some photographs which sit, which almost certainly to me show that there was some sort of canvas. And I think sometimes what happened was that the crew on an exposed railing might add some additional splinter protection and it looked like, they looked like duvets actually, they were like thick canvas bags that were arranged around some of these railings to add just some extra protection and you can imagine the need to have some protection at least around the sides uh, rather than just open railings so I'm just going to wait on that I'm not going to do any more and fit the railings just yet I'm just going to do a bit more investigation and I'll refer back to it when I finally come to a conclusion so we have the platform now, the Admiral's Bridge platform, with just the, front, just the front side. That's the part with the flare on it along the top. And a small section of raised uh, shield here. And it goes to just forward of the curved part of the uh, outside of the platform here on this corner. So I'm glad that I didn't go any further before I picked up on that really. It's not absolutely certain the extent to which the railing actually went. So I'm just going by the drawings that I've got, which uh, shows the stanchions marked along the perimeter of the platform. 
Obviously, it needed a little bit of touching up. I had to paint the deck area again, um, but it wasn't too much of a hassle to do that. So we need to get on now and build the rest of the bridge unit, which, as I said previously in part 10, is nearly all uh, etched brass, or there's a lot of etched brass in it. And it, what trumpeter parts there are in this construction are uh, modified quite a lot. There's a lot of plastic surgery involved and a lot of uh, etched brass work. So it'll occupy most of uh, this video, I think. So with that, we'll get over to the bench and let's start building this bridge up. On this platform, we also have to remove these forward uh, elements here. Go back in with a knife now. Actually, people have asked about this. Um, all it is is um, an X Acto knife with a number 17 X Acto blade in. But they're really good for chiseling uh, bits of plastic away like this. In fact, that's a bit blunt, I'll change that. So a nice, uh, hopefully nice sharp blade in there now. So that's what the part should look like uh, after the surgery. That part there is surrounded by this new section of brass. The lower part of that is the new chart house section. So I'll just start to shape that. And I'm going to use the uh, bending tool, certainly for these long sections here once you get the bend going with the tool uh, it's easy enough then to finally adjust it with the uh, pliers this part of the bridge is quite a noticeable section so we want to take care and get it uh, just right. Got a bit of moulding to get rid of here. These next sections I can do with the bending pliers.
Let's try that for size. That's the shape of the structure starting to come together. There's a curl on the back here, uh, which I'll form in a bit. So that's roughly how the part should look at this stage. What I'll do when I come to fit things together is, again, I'll use my plastic strip to uh, reinforce these parts uh, so that I get a good contact point. I think I'll uh, glaze these windows eventually but uh, obviously that's some distance in the future. These are the three uh, main elements of the forebridge. So we've got the modified trumpeter parts so that's uh, the modified B40 and this is the modified N4 so it's basically like the bottom cut off of that piece and this is the main brass element which I've folded to shape and I've uh, just checked that against the Pontos uh, Admiral's Bridge which I did last time and I just followed that etch mark just to uh, get the correct shape of this part which is uh, part 141 in the Pontos etch set. So I'm just working through how to go about putting these parts together uh, and I'm thinking about the painting sequence really at this stage. Um, I want to paint this platform in the quarter scene and obviously the superstructure is the grave of the rest of the ship. And I think what I'll do is I'll paint the brown deck and this upper part, the compass platform basically, I'll paint that in the grey and the quarter scene deck. And that'll just let me slide that piece into place and get a nice neat finish between the two colours. So we'll see if that works. But there's a long way to go with this. Uh, I have some accommodation that goes inside uh, this part, so the lower part of this bridge. This bulkhead fits inside like so. Uh, behind this bulkhead or further aft was the remote control office, what was called the remote control office and that's this part which needs to be folded up and that sits inside this structure here. So this really was just an open screen at the back and the actual room was separately inside. So again, quite quite a complicated uh, section to build up. So the first thing I'll do is fold this part up. And uh, that fixes to the back of this bulkhead. So this is the uh, remote control office folded up. And I'm just using some one by one and a half millimeter strip to reinforce those joints. It's fixed to the bulkhead there. And that uh, fits inside like that. Or something like that anyway. It's a rough position. So what we've got here is uh, this area which is the remote control office uh, at the bottom on the ground uh, floor if you like. 
and at the front here was the chart house and through these doors here was a small lobby and around the front of the chart house was a separate walkway an enclosed walkway that looked out of these windows here I've cleaned up uh, the detail from the back of the uh, structure here I've taken two doors off here and two at the back here lower down and there was a ladder moulded into the uh, structure in the middle so I'll replace all those with uh, brass I've taken the rig holes off these scuttles in the side and I just want to take out these windows or hollow them out uh, because I want to try and replace the windows themselves with some acetate this is quite high up on the ship um, and it's quite a visible structure so I want to try and get the uh, the acetate windows into that to do that I'm going to take out the plastic from inside and just mill out the inside until it exposes the uh, windows themselves it doesn't matter about the frames because Pontos provide a new a uh, piece of etched brass which goes along the front and replicates the correct window arrangement. Trumpeter have moulded two windows here at the front and there were actually three, uh, one large one and two smaller ones to the sides. So the piece of etched brass uh, fixes that. So I can take out that section I'll mill out these four windows from inside uh, because they're not uh, there's no etched brass to cover those and reprovide the frames so I want to retain those frames so I want to use a very fine burr to go in and thin those out I've thinned that out from inside and I can just hold it up to uh, one of my lights here and see how far I am but I've got it thin enough just to be able to punch that through with uh, this sharp knife the difficulty when you're doing this is you're looking inside the part uh, to see where you're using the burr but you can't actually see what, uh, whether or not it's coming anywhere near breaking through at the same time so we might not be able to preserve these, we'll have to see so just opening that second window up there it's just shown me where the window mouldings are from inside so I'm a bit more confident now about being able to go back in and uh, get some more of the plastic out. I'm just going to switch to a smaller, smaller burr. It's about as far as I dare go really with the bird. I don't want to come all the way through. That, um, that plastic's way for thin now. I've seen some people just cut these this whole section out and try and replace uh, these window frames with some bits of styrene but it's very difficult to get that neat. So uh, I'm trying to preserve the original moulding here, doing it like this. The benefit of thinning the area out at the back with the burr is that uh, there's a lot less pressure on the knife blade to go through the plastic. 
so you've less chance of uh, going too far, pressing too hard and cutting into the window frames and losing them. And if you do that, obviously you're back to square one and you might as well just replace the whole set of windows with uh, some styrene frames. You can see how easily that's breaking away now. The trick here is obviously to retain the window frame here. I don't want to break through so I just don't want to force the knife blade. I'm not going to do these two windows at the back. I'll just drop a bit of uh, dark grey paint in there. I think they're too fragile, they're too small so I'm just increasing the chances of uh, damaging the whole structure. <laughs> they may actually be small enough to uh, use some crystal clear in there rather than acetate. We'll see how that goes. I can try some crystal clear and if it doesn't look right I can always take it out. It's only an acrylic PVA so it'll scrape out if I don't like it. Uh, but it's worth a go I think. Uh, we're gaining on it now, nearly there. I'll just tidy the insides out with a bit of, uh, just run some thin Tamiya glue in there just to get rid of any uh, rough edges. I don't want to get any of this glue on the actual frames though, they're already pretty small. They're obviously fragile and the glue is quite likely to just burn through them. So that's one side, just need to do the other now. So I want to uh, take out these windows and I can just cut a slot really in those because they're going to be, uh, the frames are going to be replaced. Very carefully take these front windows out with uh, a cutting disc. That's as much as I dare do with the cutting disc and I'll go back in now with a blade and just tighten up the uh, cut and I'll just finish this slot off with a file. So that's the uh, windows cut out from the front of the compass platform and this is the etched brass Pontos part that uh, replaces the window frames and corrects the forward uh, set of windows so that um, needs folding obviously to go around the angle so this is a window here in this door at the side of the compass platform and I'm not sure I'm brave enough to cut that out, am I? Yes, I am. This is the uh, modified trumpeter part that's uh, finished and ready for the brass now. So I managed to get the windows out from the uh, side here and I cut out the slot for the replacement brass windows which sit in there and I went ahead and got the windows out from the door onto the compass platform. I think it might have looked just a bit odd to have that one painted when all the rest are open. The slot in the top here 
uh, will be covered by um, an extension to the air defence position. So the air, air defence position sits on top like that. But as we're modelling the ship, there was a platform in the back here, uh, which is this part, 79, in the Pontos set. And that just sits in the back there. Uh, it has uh, railings around the back, obviously. And then there's quite a bit of detail to go on the air defence platform. There's some baffles around the front and a new floor and a raised platform at the front here. Just going to go ahead and fit the uh, replacement window frames now to the front of the compass platform. And again I've taped the part into place where I want it before I uh, add any glue and I'll just use some uh, super thin super glue for this so just the barest touch is all you need and then very very carefully remove the tape You can see there the correct uh, window arrangement on the front of the compass platform. So we're going to move on to tackle this next section. I'm going to ignore the air defence platform for a moment uh, because this is quite a complex structure and needs to be worked out before we go much further. So the base of it is uh, this trumpeter part here, uh, which is B40 from the kit. That's been modified already. Uh, I did that earlier and trimmed away all the outside shield from that, from the for forward part of it at any rate, because that's replaced with these etched brass uh, bulkheads here around the sides and two platform sections which recreate the stepped arrangement of the compass platform uh, on this drawing here. So I need these parts out and I need to do the bending for those. Once we've done the bending I can, I can try and work out uh, and do some dry fitting just to see how they go together with the uh, bit part B40 from the trumpeter kit. So these are all the parts that I need. Uh, these uh, side pieces do need quite a bit of uh, bending, including a curve here, which is the way that the shield wraps around the corner of the compass platform. And you can see the step uh, line etched in to the part here. Actually that's upside down, goes that way. So that's the step. I just need to uh, clean these up, make sure there's no uh, nibs on the brass parts. Because the, uh, the tiniest little bit of the fret left on these will just prevent them sitting properly. Right. So I'm just trying to make sense of these uh, and the bends that we need to make. So these bits here fold up. And that sits on top of part 181, like so. 
and we have uh, to create the step I should have done that the other way around really because I've made it awkward for myself to to get in. So lesson learned we'll do this one first. So that's the uh, step created. Let's make sure they're nice and square. And I just need to check how they fit in here. Okay. You can see the line that we're following here we're following this step up so the part sits like that and this section at the back wraps around this curve here and there's a couple of little bends at the top here that just go around this corner so it's starting to become clearer now You've really got to have your wits about you with these parts because it's quite difficult to visualise. It's a very complicated uh, structure. That little step actually does add a bit of strength. I've uh, ended up soldering this part. Uh, so the two parts of the platform, 181 and 182, I've soldered them together. And that's because I made a mistake. I bent these little tabs the wrong way originally. And when I came to straighten them out the correct way, of course, they snapped off. So I had to solder them back in place. I just couldn't get the strength with the uh, glue. So while I had the soldering iron out, I went ahead and just, just soldered the two uh, halves of the platform together, the upper and lower parts. And it's obviously a lot stronger than using glue on these parts. So the problem, the downside of it is that my soldering skills are not of the highest order. So um, you can tell that I've had a lot of clean up to do on those. Uh, I suppose I just need a bit more practice uh, with the soldering iron. Uh, to make a bit of a neater job of it but anyway all's well that ends well and I've got the parts in and they're nice and solid so I can go on to the next step. I'm going to go ahead and solder this part as well so these side pieces it'll just add some strength I don't think they'll hold together very well with glue uh, but I've first got to make this bend around the back of the platform here so this side screen wraps right the way around and joins at the back. Uh, so I'll just make that bend and then I'll tack the side piece into place. You can see this uh, bend is just beyond uh, 90 degrees. It looks something like, doesn't it? Nearly, just a bit more. So this really is just a case of trial and error until uh, the bend comes together. So that's uh, pretty close, I think. So let's see how we did. There we go. That's pretty good. 
So I think I can tack that in place now. There are a couple of little bends to make at the front. And that's just where the side screens wrap around the front here. Okay, so let's see if we can tack these into place. The uh, tricky thing is finding a way to get the parts uh, clipped together ready for soldering. And that's about right. I'm happy with that. So I'm only tacking this, I don't want uh, to get solder everywhere. That's all I want to do. So that's tacked in at the back and that slightly ugly bit at the side here. And I can now run some into the corner. So as you can see, I'm not the best at this. But uh, actually, that's a bit of a result. I like that. At the front here, I don't have a lot of room for manoeuvre. This is a danger of uh, getting solder everywhere and blocking these windows up. So I don't want to do too much here. So I just need to be careful here. And this platform should now mirror the trumpet part B40 which it does more or less that's good I'll put the other side on now uh, and do the rolling again uh, that was a lucky one got that first time So that's uh, slightly flexible, but I think when we have it uh, assembled onto the rest of the bridge structure, I think it will come into line. The joins are certainly very strong, so hopefully that will do the job for us. So that was a bit of uh, soldering practice for me. I obviously need more. So that's that section all soldered together. We'll just have to see whether or not uh, it fits where it should do. So it actually wraps around the front of this platform here. Which is good because it actually pulls it into shape. More or less anyway. I just need to see how that fits with this other part. So I think what I'm going to have to do is just spread this out a little bit. So this end piece of the platform needs to sit on top of this plastic protrusion something like that no it needs to go in from the back it goes into those slots I've worked that out now so I need to try and open this up a little bit that 
the brass platform that we've just done actually slides into this slot here so it has to be pushed in from behind but it's extremely tight and I'm just worried about breaking the small uh, bulkheads there If I manage to get this in, I'm not going to take it out again because it's just far too tight. There. So with a tiny little click, I don't know whether you heard it, it's just dropped into place. It has actually tightened the part into a straightish line. So then that should all fit around the platform below. Dry fit in these parts again and um, if I fix this side screen to this uh, trumpeter platform below it actually angles in at the sides so what that means is that the shape of this the width of this platform the trumpeter plastic platform is slightly narrower than the mirroring brass platform above and that's causing the uh, that's causing the screens to slope in so I'm just going to insert a little bit of plastic strip along the side of the platform to make it the same width and that will push the walls outwards and make them vertical. So when you're making these uh, parts up it's really important just to keep uh, dry fitting, test fitting them all the time. It doesn't have to go all the way to the front, it's just really along this section here and to the curve really, So, but it'll taper down towards the curve on the edge. I just want to taper these extensions towards the front. At the back here where the uh, gap was the worst, uh, the width of this piece is 0.3 millimetres uh, and it'll taper to nothing at the front so hopefully that should give us some squareness on these side panels. So uh, I'm much happier with that. That's a better fit altogether. You can see how the filler there, the filling strip here, has just pushed these walls out. And when you view them from the back, they're now vertical at the back rather than pinched in. I'll actually uh, remove that because you can see that plastic from the side and just to finish it off I'll flatten the bottom just make sure it's nice and flush I don't think we'll be able to see much of this when uh, when it's done but uh, it's just a few seconds work to do that so that is a much better fit. I'll just finish the detailing of the trumpeter part where I've removed the doors, uh, replace those. I need uh, two left and two right hand hinged 
does. The right hand hinged ones are on uh, fret 17, this nickel fret here. I've fitted the uh, extension to the air defence platform here and that's because I wanted to make sure that it met up with uh, these panels here uh, which carry a ladder. That was the way that the crew got up to the air defence platform from uh, up a ladder here on this uh, bulkhead. And the air defence platform just sits on top like that and there's a railing round the side here. I've just got these small brackets to fit on the inside here so they're like uh, their supports that uh, go down the side of these frames here. So I'll just pop those in with some super glue. So this is as much as I can do on the bridge for the moment uh, and I'm going to have to paint it next. But uh, that's come out pretty well all things considered because it's, it's a very very complex structure. So I'm pleased that uh, I've got that out of the way really. So we can see the work that we've done. Obviously this section here is uh, the etch brass screens that we bent and fitted. This bottom half's uh, entirely etch brass as well. We fitted the replacement window strip here to the compass platform windows and that's given us the correct arrangement of the windows at the front here. I took out the windows here and I'll fill that uh, with crystal clear once the, the painting's done. And I think although I wanted to do acetate up here on the compass platform I'm going to have to do um, some crystal clear here as well because it's uh, there's not enough room I don't think to get the acetate in neatly. But I will put acetate on these windows around the uh, forebridge here. This section is the uh, remote control office which fits inside here. So that's um, quite a bit of work out of the way. I think overall this bridge structure has taken something like 15 hours to build and it's obviously quite complicated and quite demanding really to get the to get the uh, etch brass work done and the sequencing and everything done but uh, it's just a case of working things through and planning ahead and it's come out nice I think in the end so I'll get some better close-up photographs of that and we'll work out what we need to do next in terms of detail in this area So if you're wondering what this wire is, it's just to rest the bubble wrap that I use to cover the model uh, at night and whilst I'm spraying. It just keeps the dust and uh, overspray uh, off the model. So it just detaches and uh, goes back on when uh, I've finished. So Here's the bridge now more or less completed. We obviously have to paint it and I'll do that ready for next time. So I'm pleased uh, that I've managed to get that done. It's quite a challenging part of the build I think. Uh, and when I look at the other things that need to be done uh, it feels a bit like it's downhill from now on uh, because I wasn't really looking forward to this bridge construction but uh, it's gone pretty well uh, in the end, so I'm pretty happy with that. So I've got done what I wanted to do for part 11. 
So for part 12 I'll get the bridge painted and we'll look at doing some extra detailing. There are ladders to go on the various platforms and the equipment that was on these bridges as well needs to be fitted. I'll also be doing the air defence platform which has quite a bit of uh, etched brass detailing to it. Uh, so that will occupy the rest of part 12 I think. Uh, then we can start to move backwards. I'll have done enough by that stage in terms of going up on the bridge. I'm not going to be doing the starfish uh, and the upper part of the foremast. I'll go backwards and start on the uh, funnel bases next, the fore and aft funnel bases. So that's it for part 11. I hope you uh, picked up some tips on particularly if you're looking to use the Pontos set to enhance the uh, bridge of this model. It's quite a difficult part of the build so hopefully you'll have found something to maybe avoid some pitfalls if you're doing that for yourself. And I'm looking forward to a day off uh, tomorrow, Christmas Day. I hope you are too. If you celebrate Christmas have a great day and I'll be getting back to the model after Christmas and I'll be posting part 12 with the work that I've just described uh, on New Year's Day. So we're back to Friday, uh, but it'll be New Year's Day, Friday the 1st of January. So again, have a great Christmas and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.